there's a word that is used for that, and that word is interoception. And that word means being able to track what's happening inside of our body. Some of us are very interoceptively aware and others, because of behaviors that have taught us to shut down what's happening inside our bodies, it's not that we're just not listening to it. It's that we can't hear it. It's like gone because we've been overriding for so long. And when we start to look at like severe disordered eating, especially something like anorexia, you know, when people are so severely undernourished and underweight, there is absolutely like very little interoception happening or they wouldn't be able to even get to that point. What's up, everyone? If you're looking to be inspired, motivated, educated, and entertained, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Bob Mom Podcast, the podcast where we explore your fitness, life mindsets, and actions that help you become unstoppable. You're worth it, and it's time to finally make changes in your life that will last you the rest of your life. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast. I am Melissa Vogel, your host. Welcome to the show if you are brand new and welcome back if you are returning. Oh, this conversation is going to be good today, you guys. Ooh, we got a good guest on. We have an amazing topic that we all need more education on. I can't wait to dive in. I hope this episode finds you guys all doing well. We are wrapping up May. Holy crap, can you believe that like the school year. It's like done. If you're a parent, you have kids in school, like what happened? Where did that go? (laughs) But it's a beautiful time of year. We're not going to dwell. We're not going to be sad. We're not going to feel like over emotions about it all. Whether you have grown kids or kids off in college or little ones starting kindergarten next year, it doesn't matter. We are going to be where our feet are. We are going to enjoy this present moment. We are going to enjoy this stage of life and we're going to be happy about it because anything less than that is going to be stressful and we don't need to be stressed about stages of life, right? We need to just be where our feet are. I love that saying. That is not my saying. So do not quote me on that and be like, Melissa Vogel said this. No, it's not my saying. I don't even remember where it came from. I have a client named Karen who is amazing. She's actually been on the podcast and she did that Everesting challenge. And when she came back, I think the owner or whoever runs that, that Everesting challenge where you climb Mount Everest and come back up and down where the height of Mount Everest, I'm pretty sure she heard him say that. And now I'm saying it. So I got to give it credit where it belongs, but I say it to my kids all the time. I have a little one going off to camp today and she was super just nervous about it. She's nervous about her sleep. She's nervous about not being able to call me just a lot. And when I dropped her off, there were tears and we got to write a letter for our kids and we put it in the bin and they're going to give them to them. I don't know when, like maybe if they have a sad moment or something, I don't know. And I wrote her a letter and I told her, to just be present and be where your feet are. Enjoy the moment because you're going to blink and you're going to be home and then this experience is done. So I told her just be where you're at. Enjoy the time. Be the moment and be present and don't be sad because you're going to miss it and then you're going to take that away from you. So that's my message today for you guys on top of the awesome message that you're going to get in this whole episode. But be where your feet are. Be present. Listen. Feel. Enjoy. And we talk a little bit about feeling your feelings in this episode. I actually tell her she needs that on a t-shirt. I'm like, you need that on a t-shirt. I say that all the time. And learn how to sit in that discomfort or comfort, whether that's good feelings or bad feelings. Learn how to just sit there. And I'm working on this right now. So please don't think that I'm a master at this. And I'm like, oh my God, I totally mastered this. I got this and I can coach you guys on it. I'm working on it too, of whether those are gross feelings, yucky feelings, sad feelings, happy, you know, joyful, like learn how to feel them and be present because that is life and we're missing it. We're missing so much of life. And I want you all to just learn to feel your feelings, be present, and it's going to help you with what we talk about today too. So enjoy it. We have a new challenge coming up. I am launching a new coaching program. You guys, we have so many things going on in Bomb Mom that I am like beyond excited about and then beyond Bomb Mom too. If you aren't a mom, if you aren't a female and you're listening, 
we are starting new coaching programs. Ooh, I'm so excited about it. Where you can work with me one-on-one and I can become your coach and help you even if you're not a bomb mom. Bomb mom is not going anywhere, but I want to expand and I, I have way too many people reaching out to me that want and need help. And I want to expand and be able to help you guys. So I'm going to put a link in my show notes to a Calendly. Book a call with me. Let's see what is a fit for you. Maybe it's getting one of my online programs. Did you guys even know that I have three online programs? Focused and Fit, Torched and Toned, Ripped and Ready. And you can go to my website, click and download it and get my programs. I used every single one of these to get my body back. So if anyone ever asks like, what did you do? How did you do it? I created these th- three programs. I put my body through the ringer and I used them. So I'm just sharing this with you guys because we have so many resources for you that people don't even know. They're not even aware. And I want you guys to know that you have these at your fingertips and they go in order to kind of like focused and fit can be done at home, like totally at home. It was designed for an in-home program because I had little ones and I couldn't go to the gym and I had a husband at the time that traveled. So how do I get fit and ripped and lose all this baby weight at home and like just really change my body that's focused and fit. And then torch and toned is a step up. It's a little bit harder. It's a little bit longer and you can do that at home or in the gym. And then there's ripped and ready. You are ready to like go next level. (laughs) Just know they're legit and they are a program that's going to transform you. So again, so many options. And if you don't know, book a call with me. We'll do a 10, 15 minute call. I'll talk you through it. I'll answer all your questions and we'll go from there. Okay. And then we always have a challenge. So just go to my website, melissavogelfitness.com and I'll take you through everything. The other thing that I wanted to announce and let you guys know, because I never know who's listening. You never know who's going to pass on this episode is that I am hitting the road in 2024 and 2005 and I am taking the stage. I am doing motivational speaker keynote speaking on true rediscovering yourself and really relighting that fire inside. I have a website for that. It's Melissa Vogel, I-T-S, MelissaVogel.com, www.itsmelissavogel.com. We'll actually put the link to that in the show notes too. I have a sizzle reel. We're going to get that up on YouTube and maybe we'll put that in the show notes. I don't know. We'll see. We can get that up in time. But if you know anyone who is booking for your retreats or events for work and you are looking for a speaker, I am your go-to. I am your gal. Let's get me up on stage and let's fire up your crowd. Okay, now let's dive into this episode because I have Miss Sue Van Rays on and this is a conversation you don't want to miss. She is a functional nutritionist. She's a food psychology specialist, a wellness expert, a yoga instructor, and the founder of Boulder Nutrition. And she is an author. She has extensive experience as a featured health writer for the Chopra Center, and her work has been featured in People, The Sacred Science, Natural Solutions Magazine, Origin Magazine, and Elephant Journal. Van Rays hosts the podcast Satiate and leads wellness and yoga retreats in Colorado, Costa Rica, Bali, and just virtually everywhere. She lives in Boulder, Colorado and she is the owner of Boulder Nutrition. She's incredible. So go to the show notes, click the links, and we will connect you with her. She also has the book coming out, which we discuss in the podcast, Food and Freedom, Discover Your Personal Recipe to Eat, Think, and Live Well. We are diving all into the relationship with food and nutrition and feeling your feelings and sitting in the discomfort and all of the things. This episode is a much needed episode, especially going into the summer months and there's going to be a lot more food options. We want you to learn how to have that healthy relationship with food. Get her book. Okay, for starters, get her book, Food and Freedom. Discover your personal recipe to to eat, think, and live well because we're talking all about how to make those connections. We're discussing how to regulate your nervous system around food, how you can transform your eating so food can work with you rather than against you. Oh, it's such an incredible episode. You guys just have to dive right in, listen to it, pass it on to someone else. And you guys, as always, rate and review this podcast. If you feel we deserve five stars, please give us five stars and please write a review. You can also catch snippets on my YouTube channel, Melissa Vogel Fitness, so make sure you check out there. I'm always dropping little workouts on there too. Just little, hey, this is a great bicep one. Hey, this is a great leg one. And I walk you through it. So check that out too. So check out the show notes because she has a freebie for you guys. You're definitely going to want to get that. All right, you guys grab your pens and your papers, be where your feet are and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bob Mom Podcast. Today we have Sue Van Rays on. Welcome to the show, Sue. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a treat to be here. 
we were just talking about like, where did you come from? <laughs> like, I never know where a lot of my guests come from. And I always try to trust the process that we were meant to talk and that we were meant to have this conversation on this day at this time. And Sue, I think this is just going to align perfectly with all of our topics coming spring and into the summer. And I'm just so blessed to have you here because I know this is going to be a really good conversation. Wow. Well, thank you. I love talking about this subject, obviously, and it's always fun to share it with new audiences and new people. So thank you so much. Yeah. And it's a hot topic. Now, you just had a book come out, Food and Freedom, Discover Your Personal Recipe to Eat, Think, and Live Well. Congratulations yes. on that. Thank you. Yes, it's been quite a journey and it's been so exciting. Yeah, I bet. I bet. So much okay. fun. Tell me about the book really quick. Like, what is it about? Why does everyone need to read it? Because it is good. Thank you. Yes, Food and Freedom is really a lot about using our relationship with food as a portal into other areas of our life that need attention. And there's many ways to look at that. But the most important one, I think, is that we spend so much time and energy focusing on all of the different parts of our life that are external. And it is so important and so medicinal to really turn the focus to our relationship with ourselves. And one of the very primary aspects of that relationship is food, our relationship to food. It's so primal, it's so necessary, and yet it is really pretty complicated out there in the food and wellness jungle. So my book is really a journey and it does take us through the four primary parts of our being, the body, the mind, the heart, and the soul. And, you know, some of it's definitely about how to balance your blood sugar and other aspects of it are really about like how to deal with your inner critic or what happens when you don't know how to manage really strong feelings. And food is one of the best ways or quickest ways, I should say, to kind of regulate ourselves. And yet that's a slippery slope as well as we know. So yeah, there's a lot in there, but it really is a journey to the self and it really does unearth a lot of the layers underneath just our shins around food and making them a little bit more involved and in understanding the deeper layers for ourselves. I love exactly. that because it's like a roadmap, basically, for us to help navigate a roadmap. Yeah, this very touchy topic. Okay, let me ask you this, because I see it all different stages. I have younger kids and then older where do you think this issue and this disconnect with food starts? Because it has become such a hot topic and such an area where women get stuck. Like when I start with new clients, their number one thing that they'll say or put down like on a questionnaire or something is like, oh, food, nutrition, like that's my biggest roadblock. That's where I get stuck. That's my issue. And they think that's my number one issue. And we both know that it's not. It goes a lot deeper than that. But where do you think that this starts for people? You know, I think that's a really like big question that so many people are asking. And I do think there's many different places it can start. One of them as young children is by watching what our parents are doing, Yep. which, you know, can inadvertently put a little pressure on us as moms to be good role models and to take care of the ways in which we are nourishing ourselves. I also think that that same era, kids are learning so much on the playground at a very young age, they're really unfortunately involved in social comparison really young. And then, of course, the explosion of social media is definitely problematic for a lot of folks and a lot of kids. And I think it really can start really young. I mean, I talk to parents a lot and sometimes young kids and teenagers, but I talk to a lot of concerned parents that are wanting to know what to tell their kids when they start complaining about the size of their body or comparing themselves to others or feeling negative thoughts come up around food or body or both. And so I think that there's just such an epidemic out there of food stress, and it really can hit pretty much almost any age group. And it can start anywhere. I just met a young woman recently whose food stuff really started in her 20s. And I just talked to a client the other day who was asking me about her seven-year-old daughter and what she was saying about her body and what to do about it. So I see it happening all around. And 
in all areas and all ages. I know. And that was like another reason why when I got introduced, like, hey, you need to have Sue on. And I was reading what you do in your book. And I was like, absolutely. Because I think women, you're right. Like we need to be the role models. We need to be the one teaching and showing our kids. And women don't know how to do that themselves. Mm. And a lot of people like my generation, I've said this before on the podcast, that I know clients that can literally look back and they're like, I can't remember my mom not on a diet. Mm -hmm. That's all they know. And that relationship with food is so toxic. People don't look at food as a way to fuel and energize their body. And it just gets so distorted. And then the kids are watching it and it's like, oh my God, what a nightmare. And you're right. The whole social aspect of it and social media. And one thing that I see right now, just with like kids, it's like not cool to eat. Like yeah, that might be trending. And you know, it's like, I feel like there's just constantly something different trending. Always. And, you know, there might be an eating style. There might be a certain look. There might be restriction is, you know, very much happening in young adolescents and feeling like that's a way to like access their power. They're just their personal power. And where they feel powerless in other areas, it's one thing they have power over or control over. And I think that it's contagious because it starts to become like, just like anything else, it's very primal and very important for us, especially as young people to belong. And we will trade almost anything in our lives for belonging. And that includes authenticity. That includes taking care of ourselves. And unfortunately, food becomes a bit of a culture in certain domains where you fit in if you do this thing that others are doing, whether it be restriction or eating a certain eating style or counting calories or dieting or whatever it is. And it really does impact the individual so strongly because we're all of a sudden now sort of participating in something that makes us feel like we have a community or a place that we belong. And it's really hard to give that up to come back to balance. I know. Especially when we don't know what we're doing. Like we don't realize the impact, right? So it's a very complicated world of food out there. It is. And so many women too, like the less that they eat, that's like a big thing that I see is like, oh, they'll have coffee or a Starbucks or like grabs like a toast off their kid's plate. And then they go all day long and they don't eat. And then they end up like usually binging at night or, you know, making bad choices later. And there's no constant like relationship between it. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's almost like we're blocking our natural intuition and feelings and like really listening to our body of like, oh, hunger, eat. (laughs) You know, you feel this like, oh, it's time to eat. I'm getting lightheaded. Like I'm starting to see stars or I'm getting a headache or whatever. And our body's like waving these huge red flags. And we've ignored that connection for so long that we don't even pay attention to it anymore. We've like lost that eating intuition as females. Yeah. So the way I like to think of it, and you're right on with that, is, you know, there are these really important cues happening and they're actually happening on a sensation level. If you start to watch what's happening when you get hungry or when you feel satiated, you'll notice that there's different sensations happening in your body. And what happens is over time, if we ignore those sensations over and over and over, including the hunger and fullness cues, then we eventually start to not be able to access the sensations as well. And so that's scary. Yeah, there's a word that is used for that. And that word is interoception. And that word means being able to track what's happening inside of our body. Some of us are very interoceptively aware. And others, because of behaviors that have taught us to shut down what's happening inside our bodies, it's not that we're just not listening to it. It's that we can't hear it. It's like gone because we've been overriding for so long. And when we start to look at like severe disordered eating, especially something like anorexia, you know, when people are so severely undernourished and underweight, there is absolutely like very little interoception happening, or they wouldn't be able to even get to that point. And so to come back to repairing that relationship to listening inward, we need to do a little bit of like mind body connection, we need to like get on board with sort of re establishing our interoception. And that can take a little bit of practice, you know, just like anything, it's totally 
100% fixable. Like I have seen and met and talked to so many women who are in the worst state of their eating at times in their life where they were malnourished to very extreme amounts and they are healed and in good shape with food now. So it's like, I've seen the stories and I've talked to people about their stories so many times. So I just want to say like, we can repair our interoception, but we have to start by just even knowing that it's there and these sensations are primal. They're our primal brain. They're our bodies communicating to us. And it's happening in the animal world. It's happening for us. We just need to like start turning to that as the cue instead of externalized eating, yeah. which is like looking outside for this diet or this calorie counting thing or this or that that is telling us what to do because really all of the information of our inherent wisdom is within us. Yeah. We just have to practice using it. It is. Can you give us some tips? Like what are some ways to practice that? Like, is there anything easy that people could start doing today? Oh yeah, absolutely. So there's a couple things that I think are really helpful. One of them that I love to use, because I do love pleasure and I do love food and pleasure and bringing that on board is like, start to watch what happens when you're eating something really pleasurable. And that might be, you know, your favorite dinner or your favorite snack, or even, you know, just a delicious sip of coffee. And what happens is as we become satiated, the pleasure diminishes. And that's nature telling us to stop. So my first cup of coffee tastes so good. And if I have another cup or another cup, it starts to taste less good because I am basically satiated. My body is telling me I've had enough. If I eat the most delicious piece of dark chocolate, which I also love, you know, there's a point at which I'm done. I don't want more chocolate because I'm listening to that pleasure sensation. And you could really apply that to anything in life, but the pleasure is driving us to eat. And then the diminishment of pleasure is telling us that we've had enough. And that is also coming from a sensation and our unconscious mind that's just in real time with the experience. And it's the same thing happening with zebras eating grass, right? The grass tastes good and it's pleasurable and then it stops and they're done until they're wanting more later on. And so I think that often when we talk about intuitive eating, people hear that as sort of like a mystical experience that we're supposed to just know, like we're just supposed to know what to eat and when to eat. And I don't really use the term intuitive that much because people are really confused about how that actually applies to the moment of like, well, what if I don't feel psychic? Or what if I don't know what my intuition is saying? The truth of it is intuition and body wisdom are very much interconnected, but our sensations are the entry point into that information. And so it's very real. It's not abstract. It's very real. It's happening in real time in our bodies. And we can turn to that and practice listening to those types of things at any point. And it will really help inform our eating. Yeah. And the problem, like the listening to when you are full and to not go overboard, I got to imagine that that's important. And like the biggest piece to that too, right? Of like not doing overdoing it. Like, like you said, like the first cup of coffee tastes great, but then by the fifth one, <laughs> we ruin that pleasure. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. And here's the thing, like for the coffee example, just to kind of stay with that for one more minute, you know, I notice what I'm wanting if I want more coffee is comfort or is a lingering morning. Cause I love like Saturday mornings and I'll have some coffee and read my book. And it's kind of like this really sweet time of the week. And so when it's over and the coffee's done, there's a little bit of remorse of like, oh, I don't want it to be over. But, you know, I can still keep reading. I can get some a different beverage, some water or something else that would be good or whatever it is. But, you know, for me, I've noticed like, oh, what is underneath of coffee is relaxation, slow beginning, you know, lingering and lounging. And that's what I might be craving. So that's one way that, you know, we can start to notice the shift. But when it comes to eating food and when it comes to satiation, it's very tricky. And that's because we're most often, our culture is so steep in processed food. And processed food is harder to listen to 
as far as our body cues because of all the excitotoxins and all the additives and preservatives that mess with our biochemistry and that do give us false signals. Like it's a lot harder to stop eating Cheetos than it is to stop eating a piece of wild salmon, right? It's just a completely different conversation. It's not to say that we never eat something processed, but it is maybe an inspiration that if you truly want to trust your body and listen to your body and tune into sensation, it's going to work so much better if you are eating natural foods for the most part, or the majority of your meals are natural foods, because then you're not mixing it with all these other excitotoxins that really mess with our dopamine. Yeah. They really mess with our addiction cycles and our cravings. It really makes things more complicated. Today's episode is brought to you by Million Dollar Body Labs. And I get to share with you the day and night shred stack, which is fast aid BCA supplement and complete restore. Are you guys ready to unlock the secret to peak performance and recovery? Because I have a solution. I have been on these products for a few months now, and I am thrilled that I get to share them. Now let's talk about fast aid first. BCAA is the powerhouse behind optimal performance and recovery. Did you know that BCAs are an essential amino acid that your body can't produce on its own? They play a crucial role in muscle repair and growth, especially after intense workouts. So ladies, if you are trying to work out and you want that little extra step, keep listening because with fast aid, you're not just supplementing. You are supercharging your body's ability to bounce back faster, stronger, and ready for more. But what about those days when life throws everything at you? like my day today, leaving you drained and exhausted. That's where Complete Restore steps in. It's not just another supplement, it's your secret weapon for recovery, even if you're not getting enough sleep. Packed with potent ingredients, Complete Restore supports your body's natural recovery process, helping you wake up feeling refreshed, revitalized, ready to tackle whatever the day brings you, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you this product works. And to everyone juggling hectic schedules, to the busy professionals pushing their limits, and to everyone committed to giving their body and mind the support they deserve, this bundle is for you because I understand that in the pursuit of greatness, every advantage counts. So give yourself the edge with Million Dollar Body Labs day and night shred stack. It's time to rewrite your story of performance and recovery. Check out the link in the bio, get the day and night shred stack, and when you're checking out, Use the code bomb mom and save. That's such a good point. I'm so glad you brought that up because especially if someone's listening to this and they're like, oh my God, I can relate. I really do need to make changes. They might go home and go to their pantry and just like kind of do an evaluation and be like, holy shit, it's a lot of processed food in here. No wonder my body's not making these natural connections or, you know, it's going overboard and I think that I'm not full, but it's just the Cheeto addiction, you know, and the chemicals in it and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Like it wouldn't be the best to try to use body-based sensation with something like that's made with a bunch of processed ingredients because it's like confusing the primal brain. You know, it's right. adding in a whole new layer of complication. Whoa. And so I think that's why people get stuck. They're like, first, what is intuitive anyway? Second, it's not working because I'm eating Cheetos and I'm nothing is ever telling me to stop. And third of all, I have a lot going on. I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed out. My job is not a healthy environment. I'm depressed or overloaded or overextended or all the stories we have. And so food becomes this very comforting and easy thing to reach for when we need pleasure, when we're rewarding ourselves, but also in, you know, sometimes when we're self-sabotaging as well. So it really can kind of dance between the two and it's a journey. And that's why my book is a journey because to do the deeper repair with our relationship to food, we kind of need to be willing to look at some other aspects of our daily life. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And I, I'm so glad that you're using that word journey because you got to like really think about what a journey is you know that is not a sprint a journey does not happen in a week or even a month you know this is a long long process but we live in that instant gratification world and we do mm -hmm. we don't have the patience for journey and food and it's like no if we don't if we don't take the time to learn this journey and to fix this is your life you know unhappy stuck overweight constantly stuck on that hamster wheel. And then you're passing that on to the generations below you and your children. Yeah. And it's also, I think, really important to just kind of bookmark this because I also want to say 
what I just spoke about with eating natural foods and whole foods makes it easier. But I also just want to really underscore that you do not have to do this perfectly to make progress. Like this is not about becoming an eating perfectionist, which is also problematic. This is about balance. This is about learning about your body. This is about learning about your biochemistry and how food works for you if you learn to use it in that way instead of against you. But there is surely some wiggle room. Like you do not have to only eat like vegetables all day long to be able to trust your body. You can, you know, have your moments where you indulge here and there, but the foundation and your biochemistry and your blood sugar and your metabolic health, that's what needs to be working for this to work well for you. Yeah. Can we talk about the nervous system for a minute? (laughs) We sure can. I love talking about the nervous system. Oh my God. Well, I'm learning still. I'm still in the process of learning how to like regulate mine and Mm. not like let it take over. And, And I know a lot of people turn to food to help regulate that nervous system. You know, like what are the best ways to regulate that like around the dinner table or just like in life too? (laughs) Well, food is a natural regulator because it brings a sense of calm and that can be perfectly good in certain situations. But it also, of course, just like anything can become a crutch or it can become exacerbated where anytime we feel overstimulated or our emotions are flying high, we reach for food to calm ourselves down. So it's a temporary calm. It doesn't deal with the situation that's actually at hand. So at the dinner table, there's lots of things we can do to just bring more mindfulness to the experience of eating. Presencing ourselves is the first one. Breathing is a great way to do that. Tapping into the sensations that are happening in our bodies is another one because they're happening in real time. You can't remember what you were feeling yesterday in your body. And that's irrelevant in this moment, right? It's like what's happening right now. So slowing down is absolutely the first step. Yes, that's a huge one. Yeah. And it's like our culture is rushing all the time. We rush through everything. And if you did a poll on how many people eat standing at the kitchen counter, it's a very high number. We're not even giving ourselves the table to sit at sometimes. And so first of all, sitting at the table is really a good step forward for so many of us. Just creating the space and the time to sit at the table, 15 minutes, a 15 minute break is enough to eat, you know, a meal. It might not be enough to cook the meal, but it's enough if you have like leftovers in the fridge to have a lunch or something like that. So sitting down and giving yourself some space, presencing yourself through sensations, bringing in the five senses is incredible because then once again, the five senses are happening in real time. So smell your food, take in the beauty of your food, take a moment to really taste the different flavors of your food. You know, you can always create beautiful ambiance within your eating environment. Gratitude has been shown in many studies, especially with young women healing from disordered eating, to very much accelerate the healing process because it shifts what we're thinking about. It shifts the way in which we're experiencing a situation and elevates our experience of that situation. So just this simple moment, it doesn't have to be a big ordeal. It doesn't have to even be verbal if you're around people that might not feel comfortable to share that with. It can just be in your mind. It can just be a moment to just be grateful for the bounty and the beauty of the food that you have in front of you and for the energy it will provide for your body. So lots of different things like that can help to bring a bit more of what I like to call like embodied eating, which is being in real time with your eating experience. And then as far as other ways to regulate, I think that if we're looking at other ways to regulate throughout the day that we can use to work with situations as they come up. So for example, if you're experiencing like a really strong emotion that you might give yourself a minute to pause and just be with the sensation that emotion is like conjuring up in your body. It's not like we need to go into a deep process every time we have a feeling But when we're constantly overriding, 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 we end up with this major residue of emotion at the end of the day that hasn't been dealt with. And so decompressing is, you know, what we are most likely going to want to do to 
bring ourselves back into balance. Yeah. Well, then we're not using food to decompress too. Exactly. Other tools. And so, you know, what I always start with my clients is, you know, feeling your feelings. And that sounds easy, but when we're not used to feeling our feelings, that can feel really daunting too. So giving yourself space, whether it be just some downtime every day or time to write in your journal or talk to a person in your life that you feel safe with or take a long walk after work and try to use, you know, these other times in your day that are overstimulating your system as opportunities to regulate totally separate from food. So Mm -hmm. that's not always coming with you to the table. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Feel your feelings, girl. You need that on a (laughs) (laughs) t-shirt. Totally. Read up. Feel your feelings. Like right below it. Hashtag. (laughs) But it's, it's true. It's like, it's learning how to sit in the discomfort and it is not fun to sit in that freaking discomfort. I'm doing a challenge right now with my clients and we have a day and night challenge, a light and dark. And the day challenge is to get outside like five out of seven days a week, burn 250 calories. And that's not to be like psycho about like a calorie burn or anything. It's like, I want you to be out there and moving and acting and pay attention to like how your body's moving out there and what are you doing and yard work and whatever, you know, like hit a goal. And then the nighttime, we are all focusing on shutting down an hour before bed. We want an hour of dark. And that is a stretch for people. That is a stretch, but it's giving them that moment to journal, have peace, have conversations, like don't rely on your screens to put you to sleep, you know, and sit in those feelings. So I'm glad to hear you say this because I'm like, yes, we're doing this. (laughs) We're feeling our feelings without the distraction of electronics. Yeah. And I think it's important to just mention that when we say feeling our feelings, you can start pretty small if this is new for you. Like you don't have to turn the volume up to 10 and like fully overstimulate your system. You can start just like I said, like with a minute or less of just what does a feeling create in your body as far as sensation? You know, like what what does anger feel like in your body? What does sadness feel like in your body? What does fear feel like in your body? And as you practice holding that, you start to get some endurance. But if you've never even tried to do that, or you've been basically trained by our society, like many of us, shut it all down, just little baby steps. And you just keep expanding and expanding over time until those feelings that are often considered negative, which I don't really believe in, but the ones that we call negative emotions, we can start to get more and more resiliency within them. Yeah. I'm so glad that we're having this discussion right now because I just think this message just keeps needing to be pounded into people's brain that like we need to wake up to our connection with food and our feelings. We need to wake up to the fast paced life that we're living. Like it's killing us. I think it's killing us very, very slowly. And so you don't see the poison that's killing you, you know? Totally. Yeah, I totally agree. It's a very challenging time in the world. And our culture has really taught us to just keep on moving, keep moving fast, and just piling in more and more to do. And, you know, it's great to be productive. Like you and I both know that feeling productive in our work or in our home life is essential and also really helpful. But we also can at least schedule in the downtime, schedule in the free time and the spontaneity and the play and all the things that can fill up our cup so that we can keep this well, you know, refilling over and over again. And then those tasks don't have as much impact on our systems because, you know, there's been rejuvenation and restoration. Yep. Exactly. Can you give us like maybe one more, I hate using the word trick or tip, (laughs) but like how we can transform, like, so our eating can work for us rather than against us. Absolutely. That's, I love that because oftentimes food can feel like the enemy when we're really struggling. And it's so important to know, even if food is the enemy for you right now, It's so important for you to know that you can learn to have food work for you instead of against you. Like you can absolutely learn that, hands down. And the way in which I find to be the most important and impactful starting point is to start to understand your biochemistry, to start to get your blood sugar in balance, 
and to really be able to feed your metabolism in a way that supports your energy, your metabolic health and all the things that come under that, which is like, if you're in balance and your metabolism is getting well fed, you are going to notice your cravings diminish. You're going to notice that you sleep better. You're going to be in a better mood. Your body composition is going to be at its ideal state, which might not be what you think in your mind, but it will be at its ideal state. And there's a whole slew of things that happen through the chemistry of our bodies that really are initiated with food. And so learning how to stay in a healthy blood sugar range right there, you literally are doing the biggest work right out of the gate because it has the greatest impact. In fact, even if you think you're an emotional eater, when you get yourself stable in your blood sugar, your brain chemistry is also going to be better. Yes. And you might still have emotion. Of course, you'll still have emotion, but you will have better ability to govern the emotion that you are having when you are biochemically in balance. And so blood sugar and metabolic health are my always my starting point and always I what I encourage people to get on track first so that everything else comes easier. I love it. That's such good advice too, because there are no band-aids to this. We have so many band-aids in the world <laughs> that we could just slap on things. This topic and food and the freedom, <laughs> that doesn't have a band-aid. There isn't one. And I love that that's, that's your answer is like going to the inside and blood sugar. That's, oh my God. It's so crucial. So crucial. Yeah. Sue, how can people work with you? How can they find you? Obviously, we're going to go out and everyone's going to get your book, Food and Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's going to be a great introduction and a start for everyone. But how can they find you and follow you and work with you? Absolutely. So I'm here in Boulder, Colorado, and my business is called Boulder Nutrition. So it's pretty easy to remember, but it's B-O-U-L-D-E-R, which sometimes people don't realize because they're not familiar with Boulder, Colorado. That's where you can find all of my offerings, but I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, remotely and in person. I have, you know, women's wellness and yoga retreats that really bring it all together. And I do have a really great free giveaway, which I can give you the link to later. Yes, we'll put it in the which show notes. Is, it's kind of like a little teaser of the book, but also some really great recipes and things. It's called Make Peace With Your Plate. It's a free guide and it's five daily practices to cultivate food and body freedom with recipes. So just a little ebook download on my website under the free navigation bar. And you can just grab that and that will hook you up with some good, you know, stuff to start with if you're wanting to put, dip your toe in the water. So to speak. Oh, perfect. I love that. Yeah. We'll put the link to that, everything in the show notes too, and how to connect with you. And are you on social media? Do you have Instagram, yes. Twitter? What do you guys do? Thank you for the reminder. I am on Instagram at Boulder Nutrition. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Sue, I, I love this conversation. I Me I too. hope people just listen, pass it on, because this is a message that we, and we need constant reminding of this. And that's why we always have topics on food and nutrition and loving yourself and doing the work on this podcast, because one conversation isn't enough. And I love that we have tools with the free guide and your book, and then people can work with you too to like continue this. I don't want people to just listen to this and be like, oh my God, that was great. I'm going to go make a salad. Like, no, that's not, that's not what we're saying. It's not what we're doing. So thank you for being another voice. Thank you for offering other tools too, for people to be able to really create change in their life and live their best life that they deserve. Thank oh. you so much. It's been such a pleasure to be here with you and to share this information and just to have such a great conversation. Yeah. So I'm yeah, really grateful to always spread the word. Thank you. Absolutely. Everyone, go get the book. We'll put all the links in the show notes. Sue, thank you again for coming on and stay safe, stay healthy. We'll talk to you all later. Thank you. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host practice of the practice or the guest are providing legal, mental health, nutritional, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one.